Thank you, Chairwoman Baker and distinguished senators. Consider for a moment Christ Our Shepherd Academy. It exists to educate children on a religious basis, uh, to educate in all areas of life, including uh, human sexuality and marriage. Um, it believes that the best way to educate is not to say, do as I say, not as I do, but to provide an example, because to not provide that example would, would undercut its education. When they hire, staff explains to prospective employees that they're on a mission together, that they're there to exemplify Christian values. What do we do if we pass a law like this? They lose the ability to, to carry on that mission because their hiring choices would undercut what they're teaching. Now, I made up the name of the school because I've been contacted by so many schools that actually would say exactly the same thing in terms of what their practices are. Um, but the story is actually based in part on, on a case from Massachusetts, Fonpon Academy, where an employee there was, was interviewed for a position, was hired, um, and was told at the time of, of hiring that uh, we're looking for people who are going to model Catholic values, and all of you should consider yourself in ministers in this school. Well, the new hire wasn't modeling those values and was let go, and as a result, the school was sued and lost precisely because of a law like this one. And that's what we risk here. And the harm isn't just to an institution in an esoteric sense. It's, it's to the teachers there who are looking to provide a certain kind of education. It's to the parents and students who are seeking a specific kind of education for their children. But I think more than anything else, I, I want to communicate that freedom requires providing space for, for those who think differently than we do. And if we're ready to call those who believe that marriage is between a man and a woman, um, as lawbreakers are worse, we, we've got a problem and we're losing that shared space. But that's essentially what we're doing when we say that even religious employers can't make hiring decisions on the basis of, of religious conviction. So in America, there are a lot of things we're not going to agree on, and, and that's fine. That's part of being, being an American. But uh, we should at least have room for those with differing opinions on these issues and not punish people with differing opinions. We should all agree in the virtues of love and respect. That should be our highest aim in the lives that we live and in the legislation that we pass. But love and respect never require that we sacrifice our deeply held beliefs or that we hire people who don't share those beliefs. And this matters not just to the questions that, that you were asking earlier, not just to religious ed educators, whether it's K through 12 or colleges, but I've been contacted by Christian camps, by churches, um, by religious broadcasters not folks that you would just consider religious institutions as such, but groups that are looking to carry on a, a religious mission. And that's why traditionally here in Pennsylvania and nationally, we've given room for religious groups to hire on the basis of religion. So we should neither dismiss the concerns of the LGBT community or dismiss the concerns of, of those who may hold certain religious values. Um, we shouldn't punish either side, and I think here in Pennsylvania we can do better. Uh, some prior testifiers talked about the religious protections that we already have in place, and I really appreciated the discussion that was occurring during that last panel. Um, the, the protections that we already have in place, the constitutional protections that, are, that we already have in place, your state RIFRAs, have done little to, to protect folks who end up on the wrong side of laws like this. But I really appreciated what you brought up, Senator Leach, in terms of what are the, what are the outside parameters? What do we do with those, with those neutral laws of general applicability? Is there some underlying theme here that, that kind of makes sense of this? And I think there is a theme that rises above the specific religious belief. It, and that's the theme that we all want to hire people who share our mission. And I think that's something that you do in your offices as well. You're looking for 
your own employees and your own staff who have your own philosophy of the law and are trying to carry those things out. I believe that's true, um, not just for, for traditional Christian organizations. I would say that's probably true for those in, in the gay hospitality industry or, or gay advocacy groups that they may not make a distinction on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. They're gonna hire gay and straight but they certainly want somebody who shares their mission and doesn't think they're wrong in their mission. That's what religious groups are looking for here. And so when we're trying to protect religious liberty, it's not this idea that there should be a trump card given to, to a group of people to just do whatever they want. It's pointing, it's pointing to something deeper where we all want to be who we are and to be able to live consistent with our deeply held convictions, whether those convictions are religious convictions or otherwise. And we need to preserve that space in the same way that we, that we preserve an orbit around our freedom of speech so that speech doesn't get destroyed. We need to provide an orbit around the free exercise of religion so that there's not fear in the exercise of that. So as you were bringing up tax law earlier, I, I chuckled to myself because I remembered my tax law class um, in law school where the professor was explaining there's a reason why we make these laws so vague. It's so that nobody gets close to the line. Like, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. But it's precisely the opposite of what we want to do when it comes to fundamental liberties. We don't want to create the space of fear around our fundamental liberties. We want to give the space so that we can exercise those fundamental liberties because if one group loses it, even a group that we may disagree with, we all lose. Thank you.